Amazon's follow TV series made a boom, pow, and a wop when it was released back in April. It featured a whole bunch of necessary followed aspects to really ground the series in the video game universe. One of these necessary followed aspects was a large roster of firearms. While we did get to see some iconic weapons, for the most part, the Fallout TV series featured a ton of firearms that had yet to make an appearance in the Fallout universe. So why don't we go through every weapon shown in the show, talk about their characteristics, and their origins in our own real world. This is every Fallout TV series weapon explained. Colt 6250 10mm pistol. I know I just mentioned that the series had a bunch of new weapons, but this first entry is a callback to the classic Fallout games. The Colt 6250 10mm pistol first made an appearance in Fallout 1 and 2. This was the original 10mm pistol design before it was redesigned in Fallout 3 and redesigned once more in Fallout 4. We first see the Colt 6250 in Episode 2, The Target, with Max and other squires carrying the weapon as what seems to be a standard issue sidearm. The 6250 is a highly durable weapon designed by Colt Firearms prior to the Great War. It is also easily manufactured. This combination of reliability and accessibility made it a very popular pistol among wastelanders, at least on the west coast that is. Those on the east coast seem to use a different 10mm pistol, though the show proves that it's found its way west. 10mm pistol. The next weapon we have is the 10mm that is standard to Fallout 4. We see it carried by some Enclave soldiers in Episode 2, but most notably, Lucy manages to get her hands on one during Episode 4, where she is forced to kill Martha after she goes feral. According to a Fallout 4 loading screen, the 10mm pistol was small, dependable, reasonably powerful, and widely available. The 10mm pistol was a staple of Wasteland combat since the bombs first fell. Assault Rifle I've really blue-balled you with the new and never-before-seen weapons from the show, eh? but I promise that we'll get to them soon. The next weapon we see in the show is this big and bulky assault rifle from Fallout 4. We see some Brotherhood of Steel Knights carrying them around. While this AR is commonly used by non-power armored folks in Fallout 4, it would seem that the show's portrayal of the weapon is reserved strictly for Knights of the Brotherhood. And I suppose it does make some sense. The Fallout 4 assault rifle is a big and clunky menace that seems quite hard to handle without some extra strength. Browning Auto 5 Finally, the first new gun to the Fallout universe. The Browning Auto 5 is a semi-automatic shotgun that we can see carried by a resident of Philly in Episode 2. Sheriff Rex can also be seen with the gun in Episode 6. The Browning Auto 5, or A5, was designed by John Browning in 1898, and was the first mass-produced semi-auto shotgun. It was continually produced for nearly 100 years, used by nine countries, and saw five wars before production ended in 1998. Quite a long time. Now, I should note that for many of these new weapons to the Fallout universe, because we typically only see the weapon, there's not a lot of in-universe lore for them. There's no confirmation that the weapons we see in the show are actually the real-life weapons, or rather just made to look like them. For example, the assault rifle from Fallout 3 is called the R91 assault rifle, despite its appearance being based on the H&K G3. So, while the weapon carried by Sheriff Rex looks like a Browning Auto 5, that doesn't mean that the Browning Auto 5 exists within the Fallout universe. Rather, there just exists a gun that looks like it. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Moving on. Browning M1919A6 Next weapon is the Browning M19M19. It is seen above a truck in front of the Super Duper Mart in Episode 4. The M1919 was a versatile machine gun used as a light infantry, coaxial, mounted, aircraft, and anti-aircraft machine gun. Designed in 1919, hence the name, 
This MG fired 30 cal ball cartridges fed to the weapon on a belt. It was used by countless countries, in countless conflicts, and still sees some usage today. Ain't that neat? The Colt 1851 Navy Next, we have the Colt 1851 Navy. It is carried by both government sheriffs Troy and Rex in Episode 6. The Colt Revolving Belt Pistol or Navy Pistol is a 36 caliber 6 round revolver. It was made by American weapon designer Samuel Colt sometime around the 1850s. It was famously the sidearm of many American cowboys, outlaws, and Civil War officers. I think you can get it in Red Dead too? Colt Model 1903 Next is the Colt Model 1903. This weapon only appears on a Cooper Howard pre-war movie poster in Episode 8, Under the Covers. Designed by John Browning but manufactured by Colt, the Colt Model 1903 is a more covert firearm that was issued to many US Army and US Air Force officers during the Second World War, but was also the weapon of choice by many American gangsters like Al Capone, Bonnie Parker, and John Dillinger. Pew pew, bang bang. Next gun. Double Barrel Shotgun Found in every Fallout title, the Double Barrel Shotgun makes yet another appearance in the show. Bounty Hunter Slim is found carrying one in the first episode of the show. A sawed-off variant can be seen carried by Huey in episode 4. Most Double Barrels, including the one in the show, are break-action shotguns with side-by-side -side twin barrels, allowing the weapon to fire two single shots simultaneously or in quick succession, one big bang or a bang bang. The Ghoul's Revolver The next weapon is perhaps the most unique gun found in the show, and that is the Ghoul's Revolver. Found on the Ghoul's persons at all times, this sidearm is a unique custom revolver. It sort of resembles a sawed-off MTS-255 revolving shotgun. But where the MTS-255 has a side loader, we see the ghoul's gun break from the top. In the scene where the ghoul goes to reload, we see it has a four-round cylinder. And based on the different ammo shells on the ghoul's bandolier, it would seem that the weapon is capable of firing all sorts of rounds. A very unique weapon indeed. Ivor Johnson Enforcer Pistol There are a lot of weapons in the show that are only seen for like a single frame or a few seconds. I have the Internet Movie Firearms Database website to thank for a lot of these inclusions. Without them, this list would be significantly shorter. I definitely would have missed a lot. In the Philly shootout in the second episode, we see a resident wielding a very interesting looking weapon before being shot in the head by the ghoul. The weapon he's holding is the Ivor Johnson Enforcer Pistol. Built from M1 carbine parts, the Ivor Johnson Enforcer is a firearm with no buttstock and is quite short overall, only about 20 inches in length. It's so short that both US state and US federal law Classify the weapon as a pistol. Looks like a rifle, uses the parts of a rifle, but legally is a pistol. How about that? M1A1 Carbine Fear not, M1 Carbine fans, an actual M1A1 Carbine does make an appearance in the show, albeit quite briefly. In the final episode of the show, we see a bunch of NCR soldiers leave the Griffith Observatory, carrying all sorts of weapons. In this scene, and a fighting scene shortly after, we see a soldier wielding the firearm. It can be hard to see, but that's an M1. The M1 carbine is a lightweight, semi-automatic carbine famously used by the US military during World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. While compact and lightweight, by the time of the Korean War, there were better options available. The M1 carbine was eventually phased out of US military use during the Vietnam War after being outclassed by the AK-47 assault rifle. The M16 would take its place. M14 Rifle The successor to the M1 Garand, the M14 rifle makes a few appearances in the show. We see two in the Brotherhood of Steel Armory, 
and we see a quick shot of an NCR soldier with an M14, all in the 8th episode. The M14 rifle is an American select fire battle rifle. It was designed in 1954, put into service in 1957, and is still currently used by US Border Patrol and Park Rangers. More modern variants, like the Mark 14 Enhanced Battle Rifle, were used by designated marksmen in the Iraq and Afghanistan conflicts. If it's good enough for the SEALs, it's good enough for the wasteland. Minigun Just like the 10mm pistols, the minigun is another fictional gun from the Fallout video games that does make an appearance in the show. We see the minigun serve as the Brotherhood of Steel's Vertibird's defense gun. It can be seen in episodes 1, 2, 7, and 8. Pretty much any episode with a Vertibird. The minigun in the show is the same one that we can use in Fallout 4. Though unlike the sole survivor during the When Freedom Calls quest, no one pulls the weapon off the Vertibird and full sends it. Maybe in Season 2. M1918 Browning Automatic Rifle Next up is the M1918 Browning Automatic Rifle, or BAR. They can be seen carried by some NCR soldiers in Episode 8. Fun fact, while this weapon has never appeared in any of the mainline games, it does make an appearance in Fallout Tactics, so there is some precedent for it being in the Fallout universe. The BAR was an American rifle designed by John Browning for the 1917 American Expeditionary Force in Europe. It was meant to replace the French-made Chauchat and the M1909 Benet Merci that the US forces were previously issued. Despite this, the weapon wouldn't become standard issue until 1938 when it was used as a portable light machine gun in infantry squads. The weapon would be used by American soldiers all the way up to the Vietnam War where it was continually praised for its reliability. It was a beast in World at War. M1928 Thompson Another weapon that appears in some Fallout games is the Thompson. It appears in Fallout 2 and Fallout Tactics as the Tommy Gun, and in Fallout 4 as the Submachine Gun. In the show we see it during the Griffith Observatory Battle in Episode 8. Like I said before, we see many of these weapons in very short scenes and very briefly. While the Tommy Gun was initially designed to break the stalemate of trench warfare in World War I, shipments of the weapon didn't make it to Europe in time. Instead, the Thompson went on to become the most iconic firearm of the Prohibition era as various crime syndicates and police organizations both frequently used it. Even if you're not a gun nut, Surely you've heard of the Tommy Gun. Next weapon. PPSH-41 The PPSH-41 is first seen in the Philly attack in Episode 2, and another can be seen in Episode 8 during the Griffith Observatory battle. This must be the first non-American designed gun so far, right? The PPSH-41 is a submachine gun designed by Soviet weapons maker Grogi Spagen. I cannot pronounce that. It quickly became one of the most popular infantry weapons of the Red Army, with around 5 million units produced by the end of World War II. Like the bar, it was a menace in World at War, an actual bullet hose. And don't worry, there are still plenty of more weapons that will remind me of my days back in WA. RPD The RPD, or pardon my Russian, the Ruchnoi Pulmyat Degti Aryova, is a light machine gun first spotted guess when? In episode 8. An NCR soldier guarding Hank McLean is seen carrying it. The RPD is another weapon developed by the Soviet Union. While the weapon was designed for World War II, it wouldn't be widely deployed until the Vietnam War where the Viet Cong and People's Army of Vietnam would adopt the weapon as their standard LMG. It still remains in active service in many African and Asian countries. Another great World at War weapon. Psych. The RPD was never in World at War, you fool. It was pretty dang good in MW2 though. Ruger Mini-14 GB The Ruger Mini-14 GB is a lightweight semi-auto rifle that we first see wielded by Ma June in Episode 2. We see it a couple more times. Once in Episode 6, and like three times in Episode 8. 
Supposedly the weapon on the back of Lucy at the very end of the series is a Ruger Mini, but I'm not a big enough gun nut to confirm or deny this. I figure if the guys on Internet Movie Firearms Database have it as the gun, then who am I to question it, you know? Manufactured by Sturm, Ruger, and Co. in 1973, the Mini-14 was essentially a scaled-down M14 carbine, hence the name. It's a very popular firearm, with a ton of variants. Stainless steel, folding stocks, and what have you. It is still currently used by a few state's correctional departments and some embassy guards. Ruger Mark II the Ruger Mark II is a pistol that we see during the standoff between Lucy, Max, and the Fiends in Episode 5. The woman fiend, Rink, is carrying the gun. The Ruger Mark II was designed and manufactured by Sturm, Ruger, and Co. It was made to replace the Ruger Standard and the Ruger Mark I. And, fun fact, we have seen this weapon in Fallout before with New Vegas's silenced 22 pistol. We've just never seen one with a recon scope attached. So, that's neat. Sten Mark II The Sten Mark II is another weapon that we only really get a quick shot of. It can be seen on the table in Philly in Episode 3. The Sten was a British-made SMG widely used among British and Commonwealth forces during World War II. It was a simply made gun, making it perfect for mass production. It was the second most produced SMG in World War II, only behind the previously mentioned PPSH. Its name is actually derived from its designers, Major Reginald Shepard, Harold Turpin, and Enfield. How fun. Sterling Mark IV The Sterling Mark IV is featured quite consistently throughout the first episode. It would seem to be the primary weapon in Vault 33's armory. We see Lucy and Chet use it at the firing range, Moldaver's raiders make use of it during their raid, and Steph has a pretty badass blind fire moment. The Sterling was another British made SMG. It was actually designed to replace the Sten. It would seem that Brits really love these side loaded SMGs, eh? The Sterling would be standard issue in the British Army until 1994, when it started to get replaced by the L 85A1. T 60 Pistol the T-60 pistol is a unique pistol that would seem to be a standard issue sidearm for knights in T-60 power armor, hence the name. We see it used quite frequently in many scenes that have power armor. Now, while it is a unique weapon to the TB series, it would seem that the T-60 pistol is actually some modified variant of a Desert Eagle, as it shares the same grip and hammer. The last time we saw a Desert Eagle in Fallout, was in the first two games. The T-60 pistol is quite a cool looking weapon, almost a mix between a deagle and a laser pistol. Winchester Model 1873 The Winchester Model 1873 is only seen during Cooper Howard's movie filming in episode 3 and when the ghoul watches it back at the end of episode 4. A sawed off replica variant is used by the ghoul during the Philly shootout in episode 2. The Winchester is a lever action rifle manufactured by the Winchester Repeating Arms Company in 1866. The Model 1873 was notably marketed as the gun that won the West. It was a very iconic rifle. Winchester Model 1897 But the Model 1873 is not the only Winchester weapon that makes an appearance in the show. In Episode 6, we can see Sheriff Rex holding the Winchester Model 1897 riot gun. Designed by John Browning, the Model 97 quickly became the most popular American shotgun and was established as the standard of performance for every other kind of shotgun. And while the Winchester Model 1912 would later replace the Model 97, plenty of M97s are still in use today. And might I say that it was pretty kick-ass in World at War, especially in Zombies. AER-9 Laser Pistol Onto some ones that are a bit more familiar. We see Lee Moldaver carrying the AER-9 Laser Pistol as she walks out of the Griffith Observatory in Episode 8. While laser pistols across the franchise have taken on many different appearances, the one in the show is the AER-9 variant that we see in Fallout 4. 
Her weapon looks pretty standard, so no fun weapon mods it seems. AER-9 Laser Rifle We also see an AER-9 Laser Rifle in the series as well, but only for a brief moment. Some Enclave Guards in Episode 2 can be seen carrying a Laser Rifle. Since Fallout 3, the Laser Rifle has kept a similar looking appearance, boxy barrel, metallic stock, an underbarrel bracket, some exposed wires and such. It's iconic at this point. Laser Musket The iconic Laser Musket from Fallout 4 also briefly makes an appearance in the Fallout series. We see it carried by a Philly resident in Episode 2. The Laser Musket is a homemade and modified version of the Laser Rifle. It takes the Laser Rifle's barrel and slaps it onto a makeshift frame. A hand crank is used to charge up the capacitor in order to fire a more powerful and concentrated bolt of energy than that of the normal laser rifle. It was the signature weapon of the Commonwealth's Minutemen. Somehow, it would seem that at least one has managed to make it to the west coast. Trank Gun The Trank Gun is Lucy's weapon of choice after the Vault 33 armory had already been looted by raiders. From here, we see it quite frequently up until episode 3, where she loses it after being taken hostage by the ghoul. This is the first time we've seen this kind of weapon in the Fallout universe. It would appear to use some sort of chemical mixture to rapidly incapacitate targets. Syringer Rifle Very similar to the Trank Gun is the more handmade Syringer Rifle. A Philly resident can be briefly seen holding the weapon in episode 2. I mean, it's pretty much a trank gun, just more followed-y. The type of syringe used determines the effect of the weapon. It can do more than just paralyze enemies or knock them out. How fun. Harpoon Gun While the harpoon gun has made an appearance in Fallout 4's Far Harbor, taking on the appearance of a ship-mounted heavy weapon, a different style of harpoon gun is seen in the Fallout series. Dr. Nose Edmondson grabs a more rifle-style looking harpoon gun from a glass case after Lucy breaks into Vault 4's level 12 in episode 6. Junk Jet In my opinion, one of the most iconic scenes in the series is when that no-named guard gets shot, looks down to see the wound, and finds a baby doll's leg sticking out of his stomach. It may have been a bit early, but that's when I knew this show was going to be good. The junk jet is carried by bounty hunter Biggie in the first episode. Single Action Army The Single Action Army revolver makes an appearance as a toy model during the first episode when Cooper Howard is entertaining Roy Spencer's birthday party. The Single Action Army was designed by Colt specifically for use by the US government as their designated service weapon. It was an exceedingly popular firearm used by plenty of law enforcement officers, ranchers, and outlaws during the Wild West era. When you think of a cowboy's pistol, you're probably thinking of the single action army. M3A1 Grease Gun The M3A1 Grease Gun makes a brief appearance in the show when we see an NCR soldier rush into combat with it in episode 8. The design of the 9mm SMG from Fallout New Vegas is based on the grease gun, so we've seen the weapon before in-universe. After seeing the success of the Brits Sten and the Germans MP40 in World War II, the United States decided to come up with their own lightweight SMG. After a handful of iterations, the M3 was the result. The weapon entered service in 1944, just in time for the tail end of the war. The weapon would slowly phase out of service in the late 50s, though some are still around. Effen Fal The Effen Fal or Fusee Automatique Léger is a Belgium battle rifle designed in the late 1940s. During the Cold War, nearly every NATO nation, except for the United States, adopted the weapon. This quickly made it one of the most widely used weapons in history and earned the title of the right arm of the free world. Neat bit of trivia there for you. Flintlock Musket The oldest weapon on this list is the Flintlock Musket. It is the weapon that Tommy the Farmer tries to grab before the ghoul shoots him dead. 
The flintlock musket was the most common weapon of European armies between 1660 and 1840. It was a very long gun that could only fire once before reloading, took a bit of time to reload, and had a pretty abysmal effective range. Still, you can't get to modern warfare without going through the flintlock phase. Repeating rifles like those made by Winchester would lead to the demise of the musket. I mean, it was pretty good in AC3. M1903 A3 Springfield We see the M1903 A3 Springfield for a brief time as an NCR radio operator reaches to grab it in episode 8. The Springfield became the standard infantry rifle for the US Army in 1903, seeing action in World War I before it was replaced by the M1 Garand in 1936. Still, as the US entered World War II with not enough M1 Garands for everybody, some troops got the M1903 Springfield. After World War II, it served as a sniper rifle during the Korean War, Vietnam War, and is still used during military drills. It is the weapon that Private Jackson uses in saving Private Ryan. Browning M2HB More big machine guns The Browning M2HB is briefly seen in the main hall of the Griffith Observatory in Episode 8. The M2 Browning is a heavy machine gun that was designed near the end of World War I by John Browning. It was a more powerful version of the previously seen Browning M1919. Since the 1930s, the M2 has been used by the United States for a wide assortment of conflicts. It's most well known for being a flexible weapon that can take down anything from infantry all the way to aircraft. M240C Another big machine gun. A pair of M240Cs can be seen mounted on a car at the Griffith Observatory in Episode 8. Designed by the Belgians but manufactured by the Americans, the M240 machine gun is a reliable, if not heavy, general purpose machine gun. It can be carried by infantry units or be mounted on tanks and other vehicles. It was put into service in 1977 and is still used by the US Army today. Handmade guns. And of course, as a final entry, consistently throughout the show we see a handful of hand and homemade weapons. Some of the Philly residents have handmade guns. The Raiders in Vault 33 have some handmade rifles, the Snake Oil Salesman attempts to off himself with a handmade weapon, and even Vault 33 Security has what appears to be some sort of unknown improvised rifle. So while I've tried to make an exhaustive list of all the firearms used in the first season of the Fallout TV series, just know that there are an absolute bunch of weapons featured in the show. Whew. That's all from me today folks. If you liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe, join the Discord, have a good rest of your day, cheers. Why? Beans.